space scientists who track space flights of missions to Mars, the Moon or the planets in the solar system need to know the instantaneous speed of the spacecraft at any given moment in its flight. This data of the spacecraft's speed is usually displayed visually in the form of a graph. Now such a graph is called a speed time graph. And here's one here. A speed time graph shows the instantaneous speed of an object, that is the speed of the object at that particular moment in time. So the key point is this. A speed time graph tells us the story of an object's instantaneous speed at every moment of its journey. For example, if I wanted to find the instantaneous speed of that object two seconds into its flight, I would look at the graph and find two seconds. And there's two seconds there. I would read up and read across and I would see that the instantaneous speed at that particular time of two seconds was in fact four meters per second. I could go to any other particular part of that flight and look at a particular moment in it. For example, seven seconds into the flight. Well, once again, I would go to seven seconds read up to the graph and then read across and I would see that the instantaneous speed of that object at 7 seconds was 10 metres per second. So a speed time graph tells us the instantaneous speed of an object at any particular time and it's a great visual way to see how the speed of that object is changing. It also can tell us another important thing. It can tell us this. The speed time graph tells us the type of motion the object was undergoing during a particular time interval. And this is how we've got to learn to read what a speed time graph is telling us. So here's a speed time graph which we have to read and have to interpret. I've split it up into one, two, three, four, four particular sections. The first section is from O to A on the diagram and that covers the time interval from 0 to 2 seconds. So 0 to 2 seconds. Now what can we say about the speed of that object during those 2 seconds? Well we can see that the speed is increasing. Now when the speed is increasing there's a special word for that and the word for speed increasing is acceleration and we'll find out more about that later on. So we say the object is accelerating, its speed is increasing. From 0 to 2 seconds its speed has increased from 0 meters per second all the way up to 4 meters per second. The next part of the graph is a kind of plateau shaped part and that is from A to B. So how do we interpret that? Well the time is from 2 seconds and it goes all the way to 5 seconds. But in this case, the speed is not increasing. The speed is staying constant. And that's how we describe it. We say the speed is constant. It's not changing. Now, if the speed is constant and not changing, therefore we can say there's no acceleration. So no acceleration occurs when the speed stays the same. So there's no acceleration. Then we have a steep climb from B to C in the graph. So the region from B to C in the graph is going to last from 5 seconds to 7 seconds. 5 seconds to 7 seconds. And we can see there that the speed has increased. So once again we can interpret that graph as the speed of the object is increasing. Speed is increasing. And the other way we can describe that is the object is accelerating. So it's going to be an acceleration taking place. Acceleration. And the final part of the graph, from part C all the way down to part D, from part C all the way down to part D, covering a time interval of 7 seconds to 10 seconds, that's 3 seconds included, we can see that the speed is actually decreasing. So the speed is decreasing. And it decreases all the way down to rest. Speed decreases to what we call rest, where the object is not moving. Now, what we can say in this case, we can say that the object is decelerating. So the object is de 
sell a rating all the way down from a speed of 10 meters per second all the way down to zero meters per second. So from looking at these graphs, we can get an idea, a quantitative idea, that's what we really mean, by looking at the graph and sensing what's happening. And that's really the story of that particular journey. But I also can do other things from that, because the gradient of a speed time graph, as we'll find out, is really the acceleration. So I can compare the acceleration at different parts of that journey. So from O to A, we have that part of the graph, and that's the the gradient of it and if I just change that gradient and move it about to see this part here I can see the part from B to C has got a steeper part of the graph which means from B to C the acceleration is actually bigger than from 0 to A and that's just by comparing the gradients of the graph. So a speed time graph tells us lots of things it tells us the whole story of the motion it tells us what's happening with the acceleration of the motion and what's happening with the speed, whether it's increasing, accelerating, decreasing, decelerating, or just remaining the same, constant speed or no acceleration. And by analysing the gradients of the graph, we can then decide which parts of the graph was the speed increasing the most, or as we'll find out later, what part of the graph was the acceleration the most. So here we have three speed time graphs and from these graphs we can interpret what is happening to the object's motion. If we look at the first graph we can see that the speed is constant. The speed remains at 7 metres per second. So we say the speed is constant in the first graph. Now we know the speed is constant, we can say there's going to be no acceleration because acceleration only happens when the speed changes. So right away we can use the word no acceleration for the first graph. When we look at the second graph, we definitely can see that the speed is increasing. It increases from 0 metres per second to 8 metres per second over a course of 8 seconds. So the speed here is definitely increasing. We can look at the graph and we can tell that it's increasing. And when the speed is increasing, we say the object is accelerating. And that's the key word we use for that. The object is accelerating because its speed is increasing. If we look at the third speed time graph, we can see that the speed decreases from 8 metres per second right down to 0 metres per second over the course of 8 seconds. So the speed in this graph, we can say, is going to be decreasing. And when we know the speed is decreasing, we can use the word the object is decelerating. So the object will be decelerating in this motion. So that's how we interpret speed time graphs. We look at the graph and we decide whether the speed is increasing, it will be accelerating. If the speed of the object is decreasing, it will be decelerating. And if the speed remains constant, we can see there's going to be no acceleration. Three speed time graphs telling a story of a moving object.